Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Kitchen. We are going to talk some more about the soundness theorem today. In fact, I'm going to give you the precise written definition of it and then make a few statements about how we're going to go about proving it because the proof method that we'll use is not one that we've actually seen before. It's going to be a proof on the in uh, by induction on the complexity of proofs. So don't worry if that doesn't make any sense. I will be explaining it all. First of all, we need to know exactly what the soundness theorem says. So this is it. The soundness theorem for propositional logic says that if you can derive some formula phi without any assumptions in the proof system that we've provided, then it is a tautology. That is, every truth value assignment to the atomic proposition letters involved in that formula will make the formula true. Now, given that we have the deduction theorem, so we talked about this in one of the earlier videos, so, but I'll just state it again. That one says that if from some set of formulas gamma and another formula phi, you are able to prove some conclusion psi, this is the case if and only if from gamma alone, you can prove the conditional phi implies psi. So given that we already have the deduction theorem, instead of proving the soundness theorem directly, what we're going to prove is this intervening lemma, which says that if from some set of, uh, some set of formulas gamma, we can prove using our proof system, the formula phi, then every truth value assignment that makes all of the members of gamma true will also make phi true. So what you can see is that the lemma that we're gonna prove differs from the actual statement of the soundness theorem by having gamma on the left-hand side of the single turnstile and the double turnstile. But what the deduction theorem allows us to do is if we can prove this, then we can peel away every single one of these assumptions, turning them into, uh, uh, into a conditional like this until eventually we have something that is of this form. So it just allows us to simplify things a little bit. We know that we can get rid of these assumptions, but we don't have to. There are two things to note about proofs as we have defined them so far. These are things that we will make use of when we do our proof by induction on the complexity of proofs. The first fact about our proofs is that the first line of any proof will always be an assumption. So it will always be annotated by the assumption rule. The second fact is that any proof with assumptions can always be turned into a proof without assumptions. So this second fact is basically just restating the deduction theorem. So every one of these assumptions in gamma, we can eventually just turn into the antecedent of a conditional. So fact two isn't in need of any further justification. It just is the deduction theorem. Fact one does need a little bit of justification. I have to kind of tell you why this is the case if you don't already see it. So it follows from the fact that if you look at every other rule in our basic set of rules, so the other bookkeeping rule, the reiteration, and then the introduction and elimination rules for each of the connectives, they all require you to be able to cite some line earlier in the proof. So if you don't have any other lines in your proof, you can't apply any of those other rules. The only rule that allows you to just write down a formula without referencing something earlier in the proof is the assumption rule. So when you get down and get started, you don't have any other lines in your proof to refer to. In order to actually write something down, you have to use assumption. So these are just kind of facts about proofs, which hopefully the argument that I've given you is kind of good enough to persuade you if you weren't already persuaded. There's a very useful little corollary that we also have, 
which is just, again, it's taking our definitions, taking things that we've already shown and putting them in a slightly different way. If you have some formula phi, which you can prove from no assumptions whatsoever, then phi is not an assumption. So again, this just falls straightforwardly out of the nature of proofs. So this is what we want to, this is what we need to have in order to get everything set up, in order to be able to prove, as I said, this this lemma here, because the actual soundness theorem that we want to show falls out of it as a direct consequence. The proof by induction method I will talk about in the next video, but the idea basically is if we can show kind of step by step that every step in our proof is sound, then what we'll show is you know, assuming that everything we've done so far in the proof is okay, we will show for each individual rule that doing one more step, one more application of that rule will preserve soundness. So if we have nothing, then on the assumption that what we have, everything is okay, then our assumption rule will maintain truth. So if we assume that our premises are true, then our premises are true. So that one is kind of trivial. The other ones are going to be more complex, but in each case, the structure of the proof for each individual rule is going to be very much the same. So what I'm going to show eventually, so in the next couple of, uh, in the next couple of videos, we are going to do the soundness of the two bookkeeping rules, assumption and reiteration. And then I will show you the soundness of conjunction introduction, conditional introduction, and negation elimination. So I will leave the other rules as exercises, but what I hope you will see is that the structure of the proofs for each one of these is all going to be very much the same. So from that, you'll be able to kind of extract a template proof structure that you can use for proving the soundness of the other rules yourself. So we'll get into the details in the next video and I look forward to seeing you then. Hope to see you, cheers, bye.